the dawning of the day moves us from darkness to light, so will the entrance of God's Word lighten up your life. Stay tuned for the teaching ministry of Charlotte Falver as she presents this light with Bringing to Light Ministries. Today is your day for victory in Jesus. Good day to you, and I'm glad that you have tuned in to the Bring to Light program. We're starting a new teaching today. It's going to look like the flow of what we've been doing for some time, but I want us to focus more on the part of looking unto Jesus. You know, I'm so glad that we as the children of God, we don't have to look to man. We don't have to look at what's in our bank, uh, in our bank account. We don't have to look at what we own. We don't have to look at what family we were born into. But when we have asked Jesus to come into our hearts, there is something greater than the natural family, the monies, and all of these things. And it's being born into the family of God. You can't get any better than that. So we want to look unto Jesus, and we're going to talk about that in just a few moments. But listen right now to this special word with Shantae. Hello, I'm Shantae Hockman. We read in Mark 10, 17 about a rich young ruler who came running to Jesus and kneeled before him. And he said, Good Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said in verse 18, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. In other words, are you calling upon me as God? Jesus recalls some of his commandments in verse 19. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus beholding him loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, Go thy way, sell whatever thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Verse 24 says, Children, how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. The young man's God was his possessions. If he did not go and ask Jesus to be his Lord, he did not make it to heaven. Do you know Jesus as your Lord? Are you following after him? Is your trust in your riches or in your job position? Please leave your excuses behind and call upon Jesus today. Please pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I call upon you today. Come into my heart and be my Lord and be my Savior. Amen. Now, if you prayed this prayer with me today, you are now born again. Please let us know and we will send you a packet on the new birth. May the Lord bless you in your new walk with Him. Well, praise the Lord. I'm going to be looking in my Bible today in Hebrews in chapter 12. And if you have your Bible, I'd love for you to join me there in God's holy word. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so cloud a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, I'm so glad that Jesus is seated today next to the Heavenly Father, seated at the right hand of God. And you know, we as, again, the children of God, the Bible says that we are members of the body of Christ. And if that's true, and it is, we too are seated at the right hand of the Father. And the beauty of that is even though we are walking in this earth in flesh and in blood, we are still yet being exalted with Jesus far above, the Bible says, all those principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. And you know, even though we feel the effects of demonic work 
And I don't know about you, but I can look at the news for a little while and it's like I have to turn it off because some of it is so heavy and there's so much darkness and trouble. But I want you to know in the midst of all of that, Jesus Christ is still seated on the throne in heaven at the right hand of the Father. And as we walk this earth, we have to be careful of giving our attention to the troubles and the darkness in this world because they can weigh us down. And you know, when it says to lay aside those sins and weights, I think it's pretty obvious that we should not allow sin into our lives. We know that there are things that you consider sinful, and I know I consider sinful. And some other person may say, well, I don't consider it that way. And even those in the body of Christ, it may be that one can feel that he can do a certain thing, but I may feel totally different. But I have to follow after the Lord. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The Bible says to judge yourself that you be not judged. So if I regard something wrong within me, something I've said or done, it's up to me to repent and to turn away from that. But if I don't regard that as sinful, can that open the door for me uh, to have troubles in my life? Well, absolutely. We see people all the time that can judge something not to be sinful, but yet it opens the door for the enemy to come in to steal, kill, and destroy. Um, so I won't go into the, all the details of what that may mean, but I think it's important that we do judge ourselves. And if God begins to deal with us about something that is not right, or then we need to look at that and say, you know, I don't feel right in doing this anymore. So I say, Lord, forgive me when I walked in that and I'm choosing now to turn away from that because the Bible's very clear to be ye holy as our God is holy. If it weren't in the Bible, we wouldn't believe it, would we? But we can walk in holiness because of the help of the Holy Spirit. So we are to lay aside those sins. Yes, that's the obvious, but also the scripture says the weights, the things that are easily happening in our lives and maybe we're just doing it and not really thinking about, you know, this is not right. So we need to deal with those things in our, in our world. And notice we are to look into Jesus. You know, sometimes in this walk with God, it's so hard to keep your eyes on Jesus. And when we think about what does that really mean? Well, it's looking into the Word. It's having an attitude of prayer before God. It's being about the Father's business, even with our jobs, the things we do in our homes. The Bible said in all that you do, do it as unto the Lord. But there's so many things in this world that attempt to distract us, that wants to pull our attentions away from the things of God. This is a reason I personally feel that it's very important, if you can in your schedule, is to begin to make a time in the day that works best for you, to have that special uh, Bible study, your prayer reading, your time of prayer, and of course, obviously, I hope that we're in church on Sunday or whenever you celebrate the Sabbath, but have that day of worship unto the Lord. I think that's important, but not just those times, but ever have again an attitude of, of heart toward the things of God. I may be busy on the job, but the Lord began to speak to me that maybe somebody is dealing with something. And it may be that God would allow me to maybe put my hand on their shoulder and, and say, you know, uh, I can tell there's something going on in your life. Is, is there anything I can pray with you about? And I've had God to do that so many times in my life. So it's, it's an attitude of being sensitive to the things of God. And uh, so again, the enemy is going to try to distract us from that, to hinder us in this walk with God. Now look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And I want us to look at that more uh, in, in later time. Before him endured the cross. Jesus endured the cross, the scripture says, despising the shame and is set down again at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, the Bible is very clear that those who were hung on a cross were considered cursed. Cursed. 
And you know, we can imagine God and as people knew Him and even so today as the Son of God, but to think about Him being cursed. But as we know as Christians, He was cursed for mankind, that we don't have to be cursed. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law of sin and death. I cannot keep the law. Neither can you. There was one who did, and it was Jesus Christ. And he gave to me as a child of God the, the blessing, uh, the gift of righteousness. And that means simply being in right standing with God because he knew that I could not stay in right standing with him. Now, when I do sin again and I know it, I'm going to confess that as sin uh, to Jesus and I'm going to turn from it. You know, when we were talking before, um, we talked a little bit about God's rewards to us are forever. So when we talk about looking unto Jesus, we talk about running this race and doing the things as unto the Lord, there is going to be a reward in heaven that's going to last forever. And we applaud that and we're excited about that. But I want you to know there's blessings in this lifetime. The greatest life you can live is living for Jesus. And I didn't say that you're not going to have problems and troubles. Jesus said in this world you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And we know there's going to be problems and troubles. But through anything I face or deal, I want you to be reminded that God's grace is sufficient. I have His ability. I have His strength. And then the joy of knowing His presence, the joy of knowing that if I took my last breath today, to be absent from my body would be to be present with the Lord. And to know I'm going to be in heaven someday with those that's already gone on to heaven before me. But all the joy of declaring the good news of Jesus Christ with you through this television program and in different opportunities that God allows me. There's no greater joy because what I give is not something that is just for today. But I have the privilege of sharing Jesus with you and with Him comes eternal life, the life and nature of God, a home in heaven for all eternity. And there is no greater joy nor privilege than serving in the kingdom of God. So when we think about these rewards that are going to go on forever, we know that they result in the unending first moment. And we saw that that's when we first get to heaven and we see Jesus and we see our family members, and we see the beauties and the splendors of heaven. And then when God rewards us for the things that we have done unto Him in this lifetime, it's going to be a forever joy to our hearts. And I love it the way this says it, in the unending first moment. So when you have that first moment of seeing something, like I remember so vividly, the first time I saw the Grand Canyon, I was just, I took a deep breath and I just felt this joy that flooded my being of seeing the beauty of the rocks and the depth of it. It was just so amazing to me. But that unending first moment is what we're going to experience in heaven. It goes on and on and on. So when we begin to think about this, Christians are going to enjoy this when they begin to do certain things in this life. And I hope these are things you're already walking in. But before I get into some of these, I'm thinking even this moment about my mother-in-law. And at this moment, she's at the hospital and she has a double pneumonia. She's 92 years old and she weighs 97 pounds. And she has been asking Jesus for a long time to allow her to go on to heaven. Just two weeks ago, her sister passed away with double pneumonia. And uh, she was she was said, I'm jealous. Her brother didn't even, it hadn't been a year ago that he went on to be with the Lord. And she said, I'm so jealous. You know, she's older. Why are they getting to go to heaven? And I'm still here. And we spoke to her today and we were talking about, you know, eating and getting strong. And at this moment, she wasn't eating. And, uh, you know, that always concerns us. But she said, I don't want to get strong here. She said, I'm ready to see Jesus. And I thought of the life that she's lived in raising her four children and the life she's lived in being faithful, yes, to her husband and 
just, oh, such a wonderful woman and, and the joy that I've seen in her in serving Jesus and making those phone calls to people that were sick. And even when she wasn't well, she was still calling and encouraging. And she's longing to, to be go to heaven and, and be reunited with her husband and with her family. And you know, that's a truth. That is a reality. Heaven is real. And you know what we can think about? Death is real. Sometimes we go on living and we don't ever think about death for us. But you know, if Jesus tarries, we are going to die. And you may say, oh, that's so horrid, Charlotte. But you know, really for the child of God, it isn't. Because when we leave this world, we're going to be with Jesus and we're going to live with Him forever. And there's not going to be any more trouble, problems, sickness, nor disease, and no more pneumonia. And so when I looked at my mother-in-law today, she shared a dream that she had had just last night. And uh, in the dream, she said, you know, I was at a celebration and she said there were cakes everywhere. And she said, I knew it was celebration for me. She said there was people everywhere and they had come to celebrate me. And she looked at us and she said, and it wasn't in this hospital either. So I don't know if the Lord is allowing her to look over into heaven and she's seeing that they have prepared a celebration for her, but I see her longing to go to be with the Lord. It's always us on this side of eternity where it's difficult, isn't it? But with that, we have a purpose and we have a goal. And you know, I can say I'm so ready to go to heaven and I can say I'm so ready for Jesus to come back and I am. But you know, while I have breath in my lungs and while you have breath in your lungs, we have a responsibility. And that responsibility is to serve Jesus with all of our hearts and our soul and our mind, to give everything that we can unto Him. And that is my very being, giving Him all that I am, offering my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. So there are things in this life we are called to do. And as we look into Jesus, we too can endure the things that we have to walk through and deal with. I love when the scripture continues, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. There's been times that I've gone through difficulty and troubles and it would try to weigh heavy upon my heart. And what was it trying to do? It could hinder me in the race that's set before me. And I would just pause and I would think upon Jesus and know in Hebrews 4, it says, He's touched with the feelings of my infirmities. He knows the weaknesses and the feeblenesses of my mind and of my body. And then the scripture says, because He feels that, when I cry out unto Him, He is able to help me when I'm weary and when I'm tired. And when I don't want to take another step and I don't want to move in another direction. He is faithful. Sometimes I just whisper, Jesus. And I want you to know He is there to minister to us what we need in our times of difficulty of life. And then verse 4, it says, You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. When Jesus was in that garden of Gethsemane and His sweat became His great drops of blood. You know, that's never happened to me, nor has that ever happened to you. And Jesus dealing with the oppression and the depression for all men and women, boys and girls, so that we don't have to. That's part of your redemption. Jesus did that to the point, again, that His sweat became His great drops of blood. And you and I, again, have never walked through that. We have never done that. And when that scripture there says He was exceedingly sorrowful even unto death, we have seen that it would have been easier for Jesus to have died right then. But He couldn't. He had to hang on that cross so that He would become your sin and my sin and the sins of the world so we would not bear the punishment of that in our lives. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So with that, we are to give ourselves wholly to God and make our lives in this life the grand business of life. We're not our own, the Scripture says. We've been bought with a price. If you're born again today, you've been bought by a very expensive price. You didn't come cheap. It took the blood of God to purchase you and to bring you into the family of God. 
And I trust that you've called upon the name of Jesus and asked Him to be your Lord and be your Savior. And let me say this. This is something I hear today and it concerns me. If you walked an aisle one time and you prayed the sinner's prayer because you didn't want to go to hell, maybe you were even baptized, but you've gone back into the world and you're doing your own thing, then that's not allowing Jesus to be Lord of your life. Lord means owner and master, and He is a good Lord. He is a good Savior, and He has the best at His heart for you. But if you go and you do your own thing, and you get in those crowds that are doing their own thing and not living for Jesus Christ, you're in a very dangerous place. So I, I beg of you, turn, return to Jesus. Make Him the Lord of your life and live for Him and serve Him with all of your heart, your soul, and your mind. Lay aside every weight and renounce all sin and all improper attachments when they do not allow themselves to be diverted from the object, but keep the goal constantly in view. And again, there's so many things in this life that try to distract us. And when we do not grow weary in the course, and we have seen this in Galatians 6 and 9, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. We're not going to be in this life forever. One of these days... We're going to see the rewards. We're going to reap what God has allowed us to sow in this life with great blessings. But the scripture says, if we faint not. So we must not become weary in well-doing. We have to come and ask God to empower us, strengthen us. And it's okay to say, you know, I need prayer today. I'm tired. I'm weary. And I need the Lord to strengthen me. And then again, when they deny themselves... And this is what the scripture says. We have to deny ourselves. And the scripture for that again is Matthew 16, 24. If any man will come after me, Jesus said, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And you know, I may want my way about some things, but I have to say, is this the way of the Lord? Is this what God would have me to do? You know, again, when I deny myself, it's, it's like Paul said. He said, I have to crucify myself. I have to die daily. What's that talking about? I don't literally die. But sometimes I have feelings and emotions that I know by my heart are contrary to the heart of God. I may be angry. I may want to say something to somebody. I may want to gossip about somebody. I might want to do something that I know in my heart is not right with God. And I have to say, Lord, help me not to yield to this feeling and this emotion, but God help me to walk pure and upright before you. And I want you to know he will help me and he will help you. So I deny myself. I take up the cross and that cross is my feelings, my emotions, and if you will, my body, who I am. And I need to follow after Jesus. And if he commands me to do that, then I have the ability to do that. And if you're a child of God today, don't tell me I can't do this, or I can't stop this addiction, or I can't do this, or it's just my personality is the reason I act this way. Don't give me that. Because again, if you're born again, then you have the Spirit of God to help you to crucify that flesh and do what it needs to do. Now, if you have addictions, get you some help. And is it going to be hard? Absolutely. Because going through that can be difficult, but let your scripture be with God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then when they deny themselves and when they keep their eye fully fixed on Christ as their example and their strength and on heaven as the end of their race and on the crown of glory, as their reward. That's going to happen one of these days. And you know, when you are living your life again, in all that you do, do it as unto the Lord. It's, um, it's, it's really sad to think that somebody will try to walk in a ministry position when God never called them to do that. I personally don't know how they do it because it's hard enough when you are called. 
But when people walk outside of what God has called them to do, that's a serious thing. You know, as I've said before, I, I believe some people are driving trucks that need to be preaching the gospel. But some people are preaching the gospel that should be driving trucks. And there's nothing wrong with either one of them if we're doing what God has called us to do. I've enjoyed ministering with you today. It's always a joy to come to you with the good news of Jesus Christ. We're going to continue this in our next teaching, and I hope that you will be tuning in. If you've never taken the time to write to me, it would be such a joy to receive something from you to let us know what this ministry means to you. I recently spoke with a lady and she said, Charlotte, I can just receive from the Spirit of God as it flows through bringing to light. And I just give God the praise for that. And continue to stand with us in your prayers and in your financial support. Some people think they have to give a lot of money to support a ministry, but you know, if everybody does something, then every need is met. And we thank you for being a part of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Because when we stand before God, you that have prayed with me, you that have stood with us financially will be rewarded just as much as me. All the time is gone today, but until next time, may God bless you and I love you. I love you all.